Hello, welcome to this session. The title of this session is Otua Theory or the Theory of the Cinema Author. Theoretical conceptualization of Otua in the context of cinema had its founding head in the highly prestigious French film journal Cahier du Cinema or Notebooks on Cinema, which had started its publication from Paris, the capital city of France, in 1951. Cahier du Cinema was co-founded by three young cinema critics of France, André Bazon, Maria Law Duca, and Dominol Valcross. Prior to the launch of Cahier du Cinema, these film critics were associated with another film magazine, Review du Cinema, Review of Cinema, which had been in publication since 19. 28 to 1948. Cahier du Cinema, which was still being published, is considered to be the intellectual space out of which autourism or autour theory originated and further developed from the 1950s. Learning Objectives To enable the learner to understand the concept of auteur in film studies, to grasp the essential characteristics of autourship, to familiarize with a few auteurs and their films, and to follow a few theoretical models of auteur theory. The lexeme auteur is considered to be the French linguistic equivalence of the English lexeme author. Traditionally, literary authors have been credited with the creative and intellectual aura around them. However, till the emergence of the Otier theory or Otierism in the mid-1950s, film directors were not credited at par with the literary authors. It was with the French New Wave films that Otierism got established as a practice in French cinema. The French filmmaker Claude Chabrol's La Bue Surge, The Handsome Surge, which was released in 1958, could be considered as one of the first auteur films in the French New Wave movement. Voici quelques extraits de ce qu'écrit la presse à propos du beau Serge. Un thème pathétique. Depuis longtemps, on n'avait rien vu de plus bouleversant et de plus noble sur le grand de Locarno. Il s'agit d'un des films français les plus importants de l'année. Otua Thierry proposes that a film director has to be acknowledged as the most important creative factor behind the execution of a movie. Auteur directors invariably leave a signature style in their movies. It is believed that the fundamental touchstones of authorship were offered by the French film theoreticians like André Bazin and Alexandre Austrac. André Bazin always believed that a film is basically the conception of its director. Proposing the idea of camera stylo or camera pen, Alexandre Ostruck provided further explication to Otier theory. Just like a literary author uses the pen to achieve the uniqueness of his writings, a film director imagines a unique maison son to create a distinct visual language to his film. An Otua is the primary agent who uniquely assembles various departments of film productions so as to bring all of them together into the making of a particular cinematic craft. With his camera pen, the author writes the cinema text by combining the various visual, oral, textual and editing elements in a film. Later on, Jean-Luc Godard and Francois Truffaut became the forerunners of the Otier theory. Encyclopedia Britannica records that Andrew George Saris, the American film critic, coined the term Otier theory to describe the contention that the director is the vital creative force of a movie. It was in his 
essay, Notes on the Ottawa Theory, published in 1962 that Andrew Saris coined the term Ottawa Theory. The theory of the Ottawa still eludes a precise definition as most of the theoretical conceptualizations on films do. Andrew Saris acknowledges that it was the theoretical writings on cinema which appeared in Carrier du Cinema that laid the foundations of Ottawa theory. Saris, at the beginning of his essay, makes it clear that Ottawa theory does not attribute a gift of prophecy and any extra cinematic caliber to cinema directors. It also has to be noted that the Ottawa's need not exhibit a sand person stylistic consistency always. Cyrus says that, I quote, the badness of a director is not necessarily considered the badness of a film, unquote. There can be many films with high entertainment values which even do not thrive on single intellectual capacity of its directors. Films like The Cherry Orchard and One Eyed Jack cannot be called director's films. These films make their impact not primarily with their director's ability but with other factors like celebrity actors, theme, cinematography, editing and so on and so forth. Andrew Saris also observes that all films could not be brought under the critical lens of Ottawa theory. He says, I quote, obviously the Ottawa theory cannot possibly cover every vagrant charm of cinema. Films like The Longest Day cannot be considered under the autorism, according to Andrew Zadis. Saris proposed the following three theoretical premises of Ottawa theory. One, technical competency of Ottawa. According to Andrew Saris, I quote, the first premise of the Ottawa theory is the technical competency of a director as a criterion of value, unquote. If the director does not have the basic technical competency, he will automatically be out of the OTR pantheon. Even though the directorial talent is very abstract in nature, an OTR director exhibits an all-rounder's grip over the various aspects of film, conception, filmmaking, film technology, etc. Firstly, an OTR director has to be a good director. To take the example from India, Satyajit Rai, Rai is considered to be an essential OTR. Reis Charulada proclaims beyond doubt that Otio's status of Rai. His talent in all areas of filmmaking, scripting, direction, music, art design, editing, etc. turned him into an ideal Otua. Two, signature style of Ertua. Ertua ship is primarily detected through a few consistent signature stylistic traits found across the cinematic oeuvre of a particular director. I quote, the second premise of the Ottawa theory is the distinguishable personality of the director as a criterion of value over a group of films. A director must exhibit recurrent characteristics of style which serves as his signature. The way film looks and moves should have some relationship to the way a director thinks and feels, unquote, Saris. Saris explains this with special reference to Hollywood movies as he believes that American directors are forced to express their filmic personality through the particular visual handling of the cinematic materials rather than through the literary merit of the content. It is the authorship talent that provides the signature visual idiom of a film. Films of Douglas Sirk, 
and Otto Priminger are cited to establish their autorism. Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo is one of the films which is often cited as an example of cinema as a work of art that reveals the significant style of its author, that is, the director. Ah, well, set. Yeah, I look up, I look down, I look up, I look down. An auteur is supposed to be the matter unseen or a scene setter. The consistency and uniqueness of the auteur scenography would be visible across the body of his or her cinema. 3. The auteurist soul or interior meaning. More than what is materially manifested in the body of film and its aesthetic distinguishability, the presence of an auteur in a film is experienced by the spectator in a rather abstract way. Auteur cinema has larger semantic and aesthetic interiority attached with it. The tension between the film director and the cinematic materials at his disposal produces the soul of cinema. In Sari's words, I quote, the third ultimate premise of Otier theory is concerned with the interior meaning, the ultimate glory of cinema as an art. Interior meaning is extrapolated from the tension between a director's personality and his material. The conception of interior meaning comes close to that Ostrook defines as mise en scene, but not quite. It's not quite the vision of the world the director projects, nor quite his attitude toward life. It's ambiguous in any literary sense, because part of it is embedded in the stuff of the temperature of the director on set, and that is close approximation of its professional aspect." Unquote. Saris further clarifies that by the soul of an otier he means, I quote, that intangible difference between one personality and another, all other things being equal. Sometimes the difference is expressed by no more than a beat's hesitation in the rhythm of a film, unquote. Andrew Saris suggests the following sequence in Jean Renoir's film The Rule of the Game, 1939, as an example of Otoaship. Trop bête d'avoir du bien et de travailler chez les autres quand on peut être le mettre chez soi. Oh oui, puis ça doit être si beau l'Alsace, avec les grands sapins et puis la neige et puis les cigognes. Oh, oh, Marco Graphic visualization of Otoa theory. Andrew Saris presents a graphic model to comprehend the idea of Otoa more clearly. I quote. Three premises of Otoa theory may be visualized as three concentric circles. The outer circle as technique, the middle circle personal style and the inner circle interior meaning. The corresponding role of the director may be designated as those of a technician, a stylist and an Otoa. However, there is no path that a director could be graduated to the status of an auteur. Some filmmakers evolve from metteur en scène to an auteur. Others can move from auteur to metteur en scène. Auteur theory as an intellectual enterprise to highlight the role of the director as the most significant single element in movie making has developed through various theoretical formulations. It was not developed by a single theoretical school or with a fixed manifesto, but with different types of critical contributions from different intellectual quarters. Peter Wallen says that, I quote, 
The Ochoa theory does not limit itself to acclaiming the director as the main author of a film. It implies an operation of decipherment. It reveals others were not had seen before." Unquote. This statement means that, with the notion of authorship, many filmmakers who had been pushed to anonymity were brought into the attention of film scholars and cinephiles. According to Saris, I quote, in fact, auteur theory itself is a pattern theory in constant flux, unquote. Peter Wallen mentions two major schools of auteur critiques, the semantic school and the formalist school. The semantic school of auteur scholarship concentrated on the exploration of meanings and motifs in films. On the contrary, the formalist school of authorship scholarship concentrated on the exploration of the signature stylistic features of autier cinema revealed primarily through the film's mess on scene. Jeffrey Novel Smith offers a structural approach by explicating autier theory further. This approach predicates two levels of structures in an autier cinema one on the external apparent characteristic and the second the hidden internal characteristics. Jeffrey Novel Smith's structural approach to Otoa theory resembles the Sasurian linguistic binary of the externally manifested parole and the internally structured lang. Noel Smith elaborates the structural approach further in the following words, I quote, one essential corollary of the theory as it has been developed is the discovery that the defining characteristics of an auteur's work are not necessarily those which are most readily apparent. The purpose of criticism thus becomes to uncover behind the superficial contrast of subjects and treatment a hard core of basic and often recondite motives. The pattern formed by these motives is what gives an author's work its particular structure, both defining it internally and distinguishing one body of work from another." Unquote. The films of American auteur Howard Hawks, though externally look different as per genre classification, exhibit a consistency in thematic motives, according to Peter Wallen. In spite of each film's external differences, almost all the films of Hawks, I quote, exhibit the same thematic preoccupations, the same recurring motives and incidents, the same visual style and tempo. In the same way, Roland Barth constructed a species of Homo racinanus, the critic can construct a Homo hoxianus the protagonist of Hoxian values in the problematic Hoxian world. Hawks achieved this by reducing the genres into two basic types, the adventure drama and the crazy comedy. These two types express inverse views of the world, the positive and negative poles of Hoxian vision." Unquote. John Ford, the American director, is another example of an OTR filmmaker in whose films the recurrent themes of death and heroism could be detected as the internally consistent elements. Peter Wallen fixes the authorship of John Ford in the following fashion. I quote, all these directors, including John Ford, are concerned with the problem of heroism. For the hero, as an individual, death is an absolute limit which cannot be transcended. It renders the life which preceded it meaningless, absurd. How can there be any meaningful individual action during life? How can individual action have any value, be heroic, if it cannot have transcendent value because of the absolutely devaluing limit death? John Ford finds answer to this question by placing and situating the individual within society and within history 
especially within American history. Ford finds transcendent values in the heroic vocation of America as a nation to bring civilization to a savage land, the garden to the wilderness." Unquote. Establishing authorship is a critical practice, not a subjective initiation of filmmakers. Authorship is attributed from outside, not claimed by film directors. There are three important scholastic considerations behind the formulation of the idea of the OTR. Separate analysis of individual films by a filmmaker, understanding of paradigm shifts across the filmography of a filmmaker and a critical comprehension of the underlying homogeneity distributed throughout his or her filmography. Therefore, ascribing authorship is a complex process of the comprehension of the totality of a filmmaker's politics, aesthetics, idiom and finally his or her philosophy of life. Peter Wallen mentions that once Jean Renoir famously commented that a director spends his whole life making one film. Wallen lays out the practical method of proving authorship in the following words. I quote, of course, the director does not have full control over his work. This explains why the auteur theory involves a kind of decipherment, decryptment. A great many auteurs of films analyzed have to be dismissed as indecipherable because of the noise from the producer, the cameraman or even actors. What the auteur theory does is to take a group of film, the work of one director and analyze their structure. Everything irrelevant to this, everything non-pertinent is considered logically secondary, contingent to be discarded. It is as though a film is a musical composition rather than a musical performance, although whereas a musical composition exists a priori like a scenario, a note of film is constructed a post priori. In the context of filmic adaptation of literary works, how does the theory of Otier operate? When literary masterpieces are adopted into films, whose authorship will prevail in the film? The literary authors or the filmic authors? The Otier theory essentially acknowledges only the filmic author's contribution. I quote, what the author theory demonstrate is that the director is not simply in command of a performance of a pre-existing text. He is not or need not be only a matter and scene." Unquote. For an auteur, a literary work is only a trigger that ignites his cinematic imagination. Woolen elaborates on the minor connection between a literary work and a cinematic adaptation of it by an auteur. I quote, the incidents and episodes in the original screenplay or novel can act as catalysts, as Don Siegel opined. They are agents introduced in the mind, conscious or unconscious, of the auteur and reacts there with the motives and themes, characteristics of his work. The director does not subordinate himself to another author. His source is only a pretext which provides catalysts, scenes which fuse with his own preoccupations to produce a radically new work. Thus, the manifest process of performance, the treatment of a subject, conceals the latent production of a quite new text, the production of the director as an auteur." Unquote. In fact, the literary author dies in the cinematic adaptation in the hands of the filmic author. Thank you for watching the video.